Hey guys, welcome to It's 420 Somewhere. Today we're gonna to talk about Nevada loopholes, we're gonna talk about a vending machine with marijuana in it, and a potential safe banking act. Okay, so Nirvana has been in this push and pull with marijuana and has been for a while now. And it's it's pretty clear the differences when you look at Las Vegas being this hub of marijuana in the industry. It has an expo there that's one of the biggest in the country. It um, is planning to maybe open some marijuana hotels or at least hotels with parts of the hotel where you can smoke marijuana inside, which makes a lot of sense, by the way, for tourists because there's basically no place for them to smoke if they don't have this. Then you have other places of Nevada. Nevada is a big state and there is a northern Nevada where it's pretty much kind of this dead desert, dead zone. Sorry if anybody lives there. I don't really know much about it. I just kind of drove through and it is very, very vast and very empty. But one part of Nevada, my upstairs neighbor's dog is barking. Hopefully that won't come through too much. One part of Nevada that is frustrating and that police departments across the state are kind of dealing with and also trying to use as a loophole is there is a part of the law that makes it so that they can make felony arrests of marijuana um, without it being a felony to possess marijuana. The, the difference comes from it being A, legal to have recreational marijuana, but B, it's still being part of Schedule One drugs. And when you, uh, actually I'm just gonna read a quote that perfectly exemplifies this problem. For example, if an individual purchases cannabis from a dispensary, shares it with a friend, and the friend reimburses them, an officer could charge that individual with possessing for sale a Schedule One substance, a felony that could come with at least a year in prison because police officers view being reimbursed for cannabis as a sale. This uh, is a very easy fix legislationally, and hopefully that it does. Hopefully it does happen because according to the author of this article that I've read, they are saying that it does happen. Um, I they don't sort any stats on, on how often this occurs, but they're saying that it does happen. And if it happens even at all, then that's clearly police in the state using marijuana for the wrong reasons and exploiting a loophole that, that should not at all be exploited just to get felony arrests for marijuana. Hopefully as more awareness around this issue comes out, then uh, some action is taken at a government, at a state government level. Secondly, we'll, we'll stay in the illicit market of marijuana where, where in Detroit there was this man who um, had a vending machine outside of his house. It was all illicit, it was all illegal for him to do this black market, um, but he was making bank on this vending machine. Here's, here's some video of the actual machine. So of course, I mean, we've maybe seen these in dispensaries across the country, but um, never out in the open, out in the public like this. And he was saying that he was making about $2,000 a day just from this vending machine. So it was clearly very, very popular in his area. It actually brings to mind the uh, old cigarette vending machines that used to be very popular in like the 50s and 60s, just like out in the open where there would be a soda vending machine or a candy vending machine, and then there was a cigarette vending machine and stuff. Um, this is similar to that. The story here is not, it doesn't end wonderfully. Uh, he was raided and there were 18 guns in his house and he's in big, big trouble and some of those guns were stolen. But uh, anyway, there's a vending machine. Okay, and final story today is one a, of potential hope that the Safe Banking Act is out uh, on its own and potentially getting attached to a Senate bill called Competes Act, which is U.S. Innovation and Competition Act that passed the Senate, passed the House. Um, the final bill is in the Senate and, and up for vote soon. One senator, uh, one Democratic senator is trying to get the Safe Banking Act, which would make it okay for marijuana dispensaries to work with banks and not, and the banks wouldn't get in any federal trouble. Getting the Safe Banking Act attached to this Competes Act and therefore kind of getting it through finally the Senate. The one big question of this is whether or not Schumer will uh, try and kill it. And if he does, then shame on him for that. But otherwise, um, there's plenty of support. There's plenty of people in on both the Republican side and the Democratic side that would get this to pass. Um, it has bipartisan support. There's no reason for it not to be attached 
except for Schumer wanting it to be part of his bigger bill that uh, keeps on getting delayed and delayed and now is supposed to be coming out in August. But hopefully we have Senator uh, Patty Murray uh, trying to get this attached to this bigger bill and it would pass through the Senate and then we don't have to worry about dispensaries only dealing in cash and being perfect targets for robberies and things because then they would have a bank that can kind of support them. So here's hoping that this happens. We'll keep an eye on it and see if it gets through. And those are the three stories today. And we'll be back later this week, probably Friday, with some more stuff. We'll see you then. <coughs>